All right, here's the scenario. Yeah. Let's say you've opened a file programmatically, but you forget to close it. What can possibly go wrong, right? There's this concept in the Unix world, that is, everything is a file. Meaning, not only your text documents or binary applications are considered as files, but also things like hardware, keyboard, or network sockets, anything else, are also considered as files. However, the term does the idea an injustice as it overstates the reality. Clearly, everything is not a file. Some things are devices, some things are pipes, some things are your homework assignments. While they all seem to have the same characteristics as files, they certainly are not files. A more accurate, though less catchy characterization would be everything can have a file descriptor. A file descriptor is simply a handle to a file. When you open a file programmatically, it returns you with a file descriptor. Then you can use this file descriptor to read, write, append, do whatever you want on that file. Now you know what this guy really is, simply a file handle to your Etsy shadow file. Now that we know everything can have a file descriptor in Linux, let's check out the slash proc pseudo file system. This is basically a process represented as a directory basically. So we're gonna run the Python 3 process and get its ID which is the process ID, and then we can look into the proc file system. So we use the PID off command to get the process ID, and then we use this process ID to navigate into the process directory. Listing this directory, we see a whole bunch of things. We have things like command line, which is the command that was executed to run this process in the first place. There's also environment variables, there's memory map. We're gonna look at memory maps in the later videos, but for now, just remember that this whole directory is just things related to the running process. If we take a look at all the directories that we have, we also see this FD directory, which stands for file descriptor. If we go inside and list the files, we see three different files. So these are basically three different file descriptors, zero, one, and two. So basically zero is your standard input, one is your standard output, and two is your standard error. So to prove that these are actual file descriptors, let's head back to our Python process and try to open a file. So I'm gonna use the open function, read only, and we're gonna open up the Etsy passwd file. So this is gonna return us a file handle and we can store it or don't. We're gonna store it in a variable called f and head back into our slash proc slash whatever file descriptor. As you can see in here, we have another extra file, which is the number three. So this points to our actual open file, which is the passwd file. So if I again go back to my Python process and close this file, and come back here, it's gone. Now, what can possibly go wrong if I open a file and have a dangling file descriptor that never gets closed? Well, let's see that with an actual scenario. Okay, so the scenario goes like this. We have this file, which is owned by root, and only root can read this. A normal user cannot read this, but we still have to. That's our goal, by the way. And this is the code that we're gonna try to exploit. You can download the source code from hackercamp.co, links are in the description. Anyways, the program is basically a set UID bit binary. So we compile it as root, and then we enable the set UID bit on this binary. So once this is set with a set UID bit, we should be able to execute it as root. So once it runs as root, it opens a file, which is Etsy shadow in our case, then it actually drops the privileges of the current process from root to a normal user and then gives us a shell. So notice that we never close the file, which means it's still out there somewhere in the program scope. All right, so how do we attack this? Well, the logical thing to do would be to go to the proc file system and then go to file descriptors and then try to read it, right? So let's go and try that out. 
Let's list all the file descriptors first, and then we try to read the uh, file descriptor three. Uh, but it doesn't work because we're using another program, such as cat in our case, to read the file descriptor of another process. So we can't really do that. We have to find another way. You might have seen some commands that use a redirection character uh, to redirect all the errors from the standard error to a black hole like slash dev slash null. We can do something similar. What if we could read directly from the file descriptor three instead of going to proc file system and then reading it from there? Turns out that works. Now, why does it work? The reason that it works is because the permissions are checked when you open the file. Initially, when you open the file, you were the user root. Only later then, you basically drop the privileges to a normal user. Until then, you were root and you were able to read it. Hence, the check was passed. And now the operating system doesn't check every single time you try to read it or write to it. That's just not efficient. All right, this is all cool and everything. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, bruh, who's going to write code like this? Well, hold up. Let me tell you. My boys over at Apple did it, all right? Back in 2015, OSX Yosemite had a similar issue. Uh, it was in the DYLD, Dynamic Linker. They added this new feature. If one specifies a path in the DYLD print file environment variable, it would basically write whatever the log was to that file. But I don't think the contents of the log themselves were controllable by the attacker. But there was another issue. Uh, once the file was opened, it was never closed. So at, at a later point in time, one can simply drop into a shell as a normal user, but still get access to the open file via the file descriptor, just like we did in our actual example. Pretty cool, huh? That's right. We finally got some uh, <laughs> real world examples, I guess. Also, links to the original detailed blog post for this vulnerability is in the description. Check it out. But remember to keep an eye on the binary files that never close a file or a socket or a door or whatever. Uh, but you might actually find something someday. All right. Anyways, that's all for this video. But in the next one, we're going to walk through uh, the Linux process lifecycle from start to finish. All right. I'll see you there. Peace.